but what is it that the Human Settlement Department is uh, providing assistance in terms of aiding these communities? Yes, we do have uh, funding for emergency, but what we are doing, we need the numbers because we've got to account from the Treasury. And we are delayed by members of this community because uh, they are still compiling. Remember, this happened during holidays, and some people were at home, and some arrived late, and we don't want to take and bring money, which is not enough for the, the people that are affected. But what we are going to do, we, 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 we ask them in the briefing in the morning to fast track the list at least by tomorrow, we must have that list. What we are bringing is they will apply. Once they apply, in fact, we are ready to give them money from emergency funding. So we are going to give them uh, money to rebuild the, the, their structures. But what we are encouraging, the informal settlements, when they build, at least there must be streets, because the reason why fires go fast is because of the congestion. At least there must be streets so that when there's fire, at least firefighters must be able to come in and, 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 and help our people. Mamupem, is there a, a set amount in regards to how much the Human Settlement Department will be making available? And we see that a number of people have already rebuilt their homes. What is then going to happen to that money? You see, we are working together as two spheres of government. We're not taking the money ourselves. We give it to the province and also the local government too. We have an amount that I can disclose. 30 million, which we thought maybe it, we're still waiting for because we don't want to give out that money and only to find there are still people that are left behind. So I can disclose that one because I did verify it with the acting CFO. 30, 30 million which is waiting, it's going to go to the province and also the city of Cape Town. So they are the ones that are going to build houses, the, the, the informal segments. Mam Trete, this 30 million you speak of, what kind of material will it be? You see that they are using corrugated iron yet again. It is densely populated. What happens if there's a fire again? Is there no other way of using sustainable building material that will not catch fire? We've been raising this issue with the Western Cape that it's, it's some kind of double dipping of the money. That we give up this money now. What if it happens again next week? So we give more money and we are saying they must improve. Because there, there, there is a material, I think so, of building, and this one, it's not the good one that they're giving. We discouraged in our NIMEC that giving people coal and zinc is not the right thing. We must improve. We're looking at APT, it, it's alternative building technology. We are saying that let's use those because we are waiting for... The problem here in the Western Cape is the land. We want to build RTP houses, but it's not easy to get the land here in the Western Cape. So these people that are here, they want to be not close to the city. They are looking for jobs. They are coming from other uh, provinces, like more from the Eastern Cape. So we, we can't chase them away. We need to improve the way of building material so that we don't give them zinc and coal. But we don't know what they're going to use for now because it's like people are desperate now. They want shelter and we need a quicker a material, something that will help them immediately. So the kind of material that they're going to use, it will be known by them. But we'll, we are going to monitor because we are saying all the time we, want, we don't want this kind of, of building. They must come up with a better solution of improving the way that we build our, our shacks. Mam Chacha, earlier on you spoke about your concerns in regards to the Western Cape or the local government in terms of building homes for people and the growing number of shacks. 
As the Human Settlement Department, what are your thoughts in terms of the housing development in the Western Cape that ultimately sees year-on-year -year devastating fires? Just in 2020, you were in Maspumelele, where more than a thousand structures were raised down. I was in Masipumelele, you are right. I was in Hout Bay, there was, it was the same problem. And we are raising this issue with the Western Cape that we know, this province is prone of fires most of the time, floods and, 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 and we should not sound not ready. We should be ready because we know that it, where there's congestion of, 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 of sharks, you, you, you are prone of, of, of fires because of the congestion. And what you are saying to Western Cape, and I was raising in the briefing that we need, working together now as two spheres of government, we need to come and monitor the situation of building for our people. It should be a better place, a better material, a better uh, a condition of, of staying. People should not stay like this forever. So the Western Cape must try and do something. How is the relationship between the three spheres of government? We do know that at 3 o'clock, the Premier and the NEC will be here. However, you were here earlier on this morning. So how is that working relationship in terms of, you know, fast-tracking, uh, building homes for people in the Western Cape? You know, I, I know that the, 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 the NEC wanted me to wait until 2 o'clock, but because I was coming from... Uh, Pretoria. I thought it, three o'clock would be too far for people waiting for us. So I, I, I must say they did communicate with me. At the moment, our relationship is it's fine. Where we differ, we sit down and talk like this time. We are going to talk about the way of improving the way of building houses. The relationship between us, we were here with the minister. There, there is no problem. We are working together as two years of government. I, I, I don't see anything, but the reason why they were saying in the morning they are busy, so they would want if I could wait for two o'clock, but I said I was a bit worried about, because there was a complaint which came to these people to say I'm coming at 10 o'clock. Then I thought I should not delay the process and, and come at 3, because they would be angry with me if I do that. So I will still go to them give them reports and also be with them and sit together and talk about issues and challenges that you are faced with. I don't think I'll let you, I don't think it would be fair if I'd let you go, Mama, but Umam Helen Zilla, the DA's federal chairperson, federal council chairperson, um, indicated that, uh, you know, living in a township or an informal settlement in the Western Cape is far better than any other township in the country outside of the Western Cape, taking into account the access to resources or service delivery. What are your thoughts on that, seeing what is happening behind you? It's a very unfortunate statement, and for me, I need to verify, because um, I'm hearing this for the first time, but I, I want to, to say the people that are here are people that are looking for jobs. I'm saying this for the second time. But if we don't create a better place for them, we can't say they're not going to get the services. Human rights are saying people must get water, electricity, and everything, because these are human beings. So they can't, you can't say it's better to stay in a township, or, but they don't want to stay here, definitely. It's not something that they like to be here. They don't like to be here. But it's, it's something that we need to verify. I don't want to comment on that, because uh, I, I, did not hear the, the, I did not hear that statement from Zile. On the issue of budget, um, in the debrief, you spoke about the Western Cape receiving most, or rather receiving quite a significant number of, or allocation rather, to budget. And you also speak about the lack of develop development and the slow pace in terms of developing in regards to human settlement. What are your thoughts in regards to the fact that the National Department allocates such huge amounts and we are still seeing people on the housing waiting list for 20, 25 years plus. I must say, we, we were here, myself and the minister, with three years of government. We had a good meeting with the province and uh, 
The only part that I think we need to improve on is the issue of, of, of informal settlements. Informal settlements, because it, 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 it is double dipping, because we can't l let people stay outside or not having a shelter. But I think what we need to do, the inform informal settlements, we've got the funding for informal settlements. They must show us what the money go where the money goes. And because we always find some, you know, areas where people are complaining of not having houses. But we were here, we've seen what they are doing now. It's better than last year, I must say. There's, there is improvement. They showed us all the houses and also the, the flats that they've built, the RTP houses. And we want more because we have a backlog. We say brick and mortar. Now we must get rid of it because it, sometimes you don't get water. Brick and mortar, we, we need to look, look at the alternative building technology, which is faster. And we are going to monitor the funding that we send to provinces. We, we monitor it. We monitor it. All we are saying, it must come to these areas, that money. For informal settlements, they must be improved. It must be used for these cases like this one. Thank you so much, Mam Trete there, the Deputy Minister in uh, Human Settlement, obviously talking to us about their assistance um, for communities like Langa, as you mentioned, and she mentioned the, how Cape Town is fire-prone, particularly the informal settlements.